when she would have proposed 100,000 era minimum wage in Nigeria, 2018, 2019. I remember a dollar then was about 350 to 400 naira or something like that, right? Even Shawure himself would not propose uh, 100,000 naira anymore. You know that anyway, you know Shawure. But 1 million, is that too much? It's not even enough. But they will tell you that is going to bankrupt Nigeria. Other billions and trillions that they have ferried away in the names of buying themselves cars, building houses, and all of that nonsense, those didn't bankrupt Nigeria. Do you see the whole uh, cheating? Do you see the whole thing there? I know all of us, you know, those of you will be say oh, you are among uh, the over 100 million, uh, 142 million uh, uh, Nigerians living in multi dimensional poverty, possibly have no real job. You probably would never really understand, okay? I'm talking to those who are really working every day, but they are still so poor because the criminals in government have destroyed the value of uh, their labor even before they get paid. Do you understand how that how hard that is? Anyway, I wish you what you wish yourselves. Okay, if you think the roads eh, are so nice that uh, they are willing to really consider what you really deserve and give that to you, they won't. You know that, Abby. Let's continue looking. See, the last a few days, especially two days ago, it was actually like uh, I think it was. Uh, yeah, two days ago. How about uh, Wigwe? Uh, the man they said is the uh, CEO of uh, Access Bank. A sort of, uh, you know, a financial prodigy, like a financial uh, genius. All right. Uh, a philanthropist, because I've seen a few of his clips, right? I didn't know this guy until yesterday when the news of his uh, death hit everywhere. And the reason why I was so interested is because it was that same time that the report of, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, killing of uh, the driver of uh, a transportation company in Nigeria, uh, you know, the driver was killed, the passengers were kidnapped, and a little girl was left behind. And I didn't really see rage or emotion or anything anywhere because people are so used to that. Right. And what that did to me was that, uh, ah, man, as much as this tragedy of the death of this bank CEO guy, right, uh, is, you know, it's probably irreplaceable, especially to those has been able to actually impact on their lives, which are so many. I have seen a lot of people saying a lot of good things about him. But he took, he took over the whole airspace, everywhere, everybody, everyone. And nobody really care if some people got kidnapped from a bus. A little girl was left behind and the driver was killed. And a few other things like that. You know what I mean? Like, I am not trying to uh, be like a gatekeeper of how you people should react to things. So I am just an observer, okay, that is trying to be observant and telling majority of you here today that hmm, if you did not believe that the life, the, the life of uh, the average uh, majority of Nigerians remains just statistics in the book of those who claimed to be uh, your leaders in Nigeria. And it is also similar even to the populace too. We are all just like random, random people, uh, statistics, and if they come here and they kill a lot of us, all they have to do is just uh, manufacture a figure. They don't even have to count them. <clears throat> I got a report. I haven't. I don't have the detail. That's why I haven't. Uh, I shared that with you. That over five hundred people were killed in Agatu again in Benue State just last night till this morning, and that's what I mean. Statistics. Do you know how many number is five hundred? Five hundred human beings 
eh killed and there is no rage it is ah oh ah, god we clear god god we save us from these people ah, apc god will punish you eh ah, ah, 500 people it's not like everyone is i mean people are going to go there and actually count them well, it's because there's too many. Too many people have been killed. They just use a random figure and say, 510, 500, 320. And 320 is like individual person like that. Even if a child is killed, right? A whole family have been slaughtered severally. A whole family have been kidnapped and even killed. But because they do not really have that big name. And the system has normalized that. And all of us, the, op the oppressor, and all of us, the oppressed, you mentally, psychologically, that is how we live. That's how we react. I am telling you that if you have seen the news coverage of the death of this guy, you probably will think he's probably a minister in Nigeria or a big, you know what I mean? Like, well, I bet that is due to his uh, philanthropic job, which means he's been to, like, he's had a lot of people around him that he's been able to impact, no doubt. But you know, the tragedy too is that he died. He's, uh, he's I mean, you know, I think he's, uh, a child also died, his wife. I think there are two children died, the wife. And uh, again, listen to this. So when the reports came out, they mentioned his name. They listed his wife. They listed their kids who died in there, right? And they said the pilots and maybe six others or four others. Those others are now others. Me and you can be like others. Others to the rest of the world because we do not really matter. But in America, eh, here in the UK, if any soul, any life is lost, trust me, eh, you will get to know the name of the soul if more are lost and it becomes a national thing in their country. Even those of you who are not in America, you begin to get to mention some. Some of you actually know some names of those killed by the American police in America. The blacks killed, the whites killed. Some of you are kind of really, really detailed about them. Abi, well, if I ask you, do you know the names of those uh, children killed in Mangu eh, on the 24th of uh, December, 2023? Could you, do you know any name? You don't. Do I know any name? I don't. And if I do, I do not remember a lot of them. And that is how they, we are programmed. But when you wear one name, you don't even have to know them. And you just have to feel the empathy. You just have to feel the humanity and say, oh my God. Damn. Huh? How could someone like that just die? How could the plane crash? Oh my God, the children. Huh? A whole family. Oh, you know, that's your humanity there. And it is normal. It's okay. But it is selective. We select how we empathize. We are in a society whereby if your second name doesn't really ring bell, if you learn cut off your head, they will say three people killed. One of them, they cut off one head. That's it. And you don't really have to be rich. You don't have to be a billionaire. You don't have to be a politician. Before you are moved from statistics to citizen -y. citizenship means everyone of force force like that eh, is what is registered into the system and if any of us should die they must explain what killed us nigeria has no citizenship you and i have no citizenship okay if I tell you who is a Nigerian now, how do you become a Nigerian? You can only give me your own meaning. Somebody else will give you their own meaning. And maybe you begin to argue. No, it's a lie. You cannot be, you cannot be uh, uh, denaturalized. You can, no, 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 no. You can't say that because there is no real pathway that is really clear to citizenship. And because there is none, none of us is treated as a citizen. We are treated as a subject. You know that subjects are those who are like, sit down, stand up. Don't look at your leader like that. Don't talk like that. Oh yeah, arrest him. Oh yeah, kill them. All of you, fire them. I will kill you. Nothing will happen. I will kill your village. Nothing will happen. Because you have no citizenship. Think about that. 
So yeah, this guy happened to be a good guy from what I heard. And in one of the clips I found online, it was one of the places where he was meeting his own kinsmen, like Kindred, right? Speaking to his own uh, community people and telling them that he has the capacity to build them a very, very good university uh, institution in that place. Bring, uh, uh, what you could bring development, uh, you know, he needed their support. I don't know if he's been able to start the building of that before this happened. Oh, Baba, there's another thing I want to also pick out. Immediately after the crash, America will always be America. Advanced countries will always be advanced countries. If this guy crashed in Nigeria, now conspiracy theories could kill everybody for Niger. Within 24 hours, the responsible body in America decided to give their first preliminary report on what really happened. Okay? Well, yeah. How about uh we agree the guy i just want to thank all of you eh? my brothers here i want to thank all of you starting with our chairman you see eh? for what you people are doing here in support for everybody where they here eh? this now on our projects we're gonna go protect them with anything we wanna get no university we go there like this no before nigeria for africa Jump! On my children, nothing will compare to this university. All of our children, eh? Yes. Now this school they will go. Yeah. 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 We go already by next week. The many buildings will start. Yeah. Thousand people go to work for here. Yeah. 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 We don't want security problems. No way. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No security problems. No security yeah. issue. Yeah. 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 All of us get out. Yeah. Yeah. What is the land? All of us get out. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to spoil them? We finish them. It's unfortunate. Uh, this guy is not just what you saw there. I think uh, he's also, he also has uh, a foundation that has actually really helped their children, not just in Nigeria, even across Africa, with evidence. Okay, I'm talking about uh, tens of thousands of uh, children where they've been provided with uh, healthcare, education, like scholarship and all that stuff. And I was in there in his own uh, community. Somebody said the university is already uh, built and is meant to be opened when this tragedy struck. I don't want to fill your mind with uh, uh, what you call any other con uh, conspiracy things people are saying out there, okay? I believe that the guy lived a wonderful life and this happened, okay? Accident happens and... Another thing that may actually happen afterward or whatever their investigation uh, sort of uh, reveals is a guy that seems to live, he lived a good life, even though he could still do more if he's still here with us, Abby. But it's unfortunate. Now, the American uh, agency that uh, sort of, uh, it was, in fact, it was going to uh, Las Vegas where he was to uh, watch last night's. Uh, you know, Super Bowl. And Super Bowl is like the Champions League final, okay? It's something so huge in America. This guy is an investment banker, okay? Who was able to pull resources together and they bought almost a, a dead bank, revived it, and then they moved it to the number fourth position, the fourth biggest bank in Nigeria. And from what we heard, right? He himself and his own partners, they were now going uh, beyond Nigeria, uh, expanding their market even beyond Africa, from what I heard, though, right? Access. Now, which means he's not just going to America to go and watch a Super Bowl, guys. Rich guys like that will not pay 13,000 US dollars for a ticket just to go and see the game only. No, 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 no. You should know it must be about business as well. But whatever it was, we will probably never be, it's 
probably none of our business, okay? But what really happened? How could the brand new uh, shopper drop off the, uh, you know, drop off the sky and then exploded upon impact? That's what they said. But mm, we'll, hear them, we'll hear from them directly. Listen to this. Good evening. I'm Michael Graham, a board member with the National Transportation Safety Board. Joining me tonight is uh, our investigator in charge, Aaron Sauer. The NTSB uh, just recently and within about an hour ago arrived on scene for this accident investigation. Last night at 8.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, an Airbus EC-130 helicopter departed Palm Springs, California en route to Boulder City, Nevada. At about 10.08 p.m., the helicopter impacted the terrain south of I-15 near Holloran Springs, California. Holloran Springs is about 75 miles northeast of Barstow. Two crew members and four passengers were on board and were fatally injured. Before I go any farther, on behalf of the NTSB, I'd like to express our deepest sympathies to the families and loved ones of those who lost their lives in this terrible tragedy. We have a representative from the NTSB's Transportation Disaster Assistance Division on scene with us. She is currently working with the family members of those who lost their lives and will provide support as well as investigative updates as they become available. The NTSB is an independent agency charged by Congress to investigate every civil aviation accident and significant accidents in the other transportation modes. We are on scene now to gather perishable evidence. Our team is methodically and systematically reviews all evidence and considers all potential factors to determine the probable cause. This is the beginning of a long process. We will not jump to any conclusions, and the information that I provide for you tonight is preliminary. A preliminary report will be available in a couple weeks, and however, a full NTSB investigative report and investigation will last 12 to 24 months before a final report is published. Additional details about about the accident include. The crew consisted of a pilot in command and a safety pilot. The accident flight was operated by Orbic Air LLC as a Part 135 charter flight. Witness reports of the weather conditions at the time of the accident suggest rain and a wintry mix. The, heli the helicopter was not equipped with a cockpit voice recorder or a flight data recorder. This helicopter was not required to be equipped with those type of recording devices. We are aware of media reports of some downed power lines near the accident site. We will be looking into this report during our on-scene investigative, st investigative phase of, of this investigation. The NTSB investigator in charge, as I said, is Aaron Sauer. He will be joined by Mark Ward as the deputy investigator in charge. Several other NTS investigators are on scene and will be examining the following areas. Airworthiness to include uh, maintenance and structures of the helicopter, operations, meteorology, and air traffic control. Parties to the investigation include the FAA and Orbic Air LLC. As the uh, investigation continues, other parties could be named. The BEA, the French Aviation Accident Investigation Agency, will serve as an accredited representative because France is the state of manufacturer of the Airbus helicopter and the Turbomeca engine. Both Airbus helicopters and Turbomeca Meca, Meca engines will serve as technical advisors to the investigation. Planned activities for tomorrow will include traveling to the accident site to conduct the initial on-scene 
documentation, and documentation will also include aerial mapping of the wreckage with a drone and site measurements. Working, uh, also, we will be working with Orbic Air to obtain flight crew rep records, helicopter maintenance records, and flight dispatch records. Uh, we were aware that there were uh, several 911 calls last night to report the crash from Interstate 15. And we'd like to ask any of those people that had witnessed that if they would reach out to us with any further information they may have, such as photos or anything of that sort. And we can be reached through witness at ntsb.gov. Again, that's witness at ntsb.gov. We will provide updates as they become available. You can follow the NTSB on X, or formerly known as Twitter at ntsb.gov. Uh, one final comment. I'd like to thank the uh, first responders who uh, f first uh, res responded to the uh, accident scene and the ongoing co coordination of the San Bernardino County uh, sh uh, Sheriff's Department. We really appreciate, appreciate all their work they're doing. Uh, I'll take a few questions here. Uh, as I do, please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation. Please go ahead. Sean Hanlon News. Um, was there a fire involved when the aircraft uh, crashed after it hit the ground? Okay, the question is, was there a fire involved when the air crash uh, uh, hit the ground? Uh, as far as we know, uh, from what was reported from witnesses, that there was fire uh, when the aircraft did contact, contact the terrain. The rental company, or the was this a charter flight coming from Las Vegas with Orbit Air that, that these passengers rented this aircraft? Uh, yeah, the the question is, did these passengers rent the aircraft from a charter company? Uh, yes, they did. The charter company actually uh, is, uh, I guess they have an address out of Camarillo, California, but I think they base out of Burbank. Uh, we're looking into that for sure. Uh, they will be arriving to help us out as a party member. Uh, the flight was actually from Palm Springs, California to uh, Boulder City, Nevada. The uh, weather conditions, you said there was a mix of rain and snow. Can you talk more about the weather conditions in the area at the time the helicopter was flying through that area? The question is uh, about the weather conditions at the time of the accident and where the helicopter crashed. Uh, it was reported by witnesses that there was rain with some wintry mix. We currently have uh, a meteorologist working on our team and we are working to analyze and get the exact weather conditions at that time. Of course, that's uh, out in the middle of the desert, so we'll have to find the closest uh, reporting stations nearby to be able to give any accurate information as far as the weather was at the scene. My last question is, um, do you know the altitude that the helicopter was flying through the area? I mean, was it, you know, did they experience, is it possible they experienced a mechanical problem, they were flying high and they, you know, auto-rotated down or came down somehow, or were they flying so low that they crashed into the side of a mountain? What do we know about that? Uh, the question is, is about the altitude and the flight path of the helicopter uh, uh, during the flight. Uh, we don't have any specific information on that right now. We are getting air traffic control data, ADSB data. Uh, we're just starting to receive that. Uh, hopefully we'll have more information tomorrow for you on that specifically. And we always have to ask people, do, uh, do you hate anything? On so I decided to uh, share that with you so that those of you who are watching me from Nigeria, eh? whenever there is, uh, when something happens, and the agency handling that is speaking to the public. You have to tell what you know. You have to give the public something. If you are there, if you, are, if you don't have anything to give the public, do not address the press. So in their case, they call it preliminary. The response and everything that has given them little, little information, idea about the crash, the little they can work with until they have the full information but so far, so good. They've involved the aircraft, uh, uh, sorry, the, the airline, uh, the business that owns the helicopter. They've uh, involved the, the manufacturer of the, uh, you know what I mean? Possibly the insurance company there. And so many other bodies that are going to be involved in their investigation. I didn't even know they crashed into a train. 
That's exactly what happened. They said the, the weather was bad, and then uh, the uh, the chopper, the helicopter, crashed into a train, uh, and there was fire. But again, a lot of people have said a lot of things. If mm, people believe that uh, people are comparing this now uh, with that of uh, Kobe Bryant, right? You know, Kobe also died similarly, right? On a chartered uh, chopper like that, and with his daughter, I mean, with uh, his daughter, I believe, right? So a lot of people are believing that uh, this is not just an accident, okay? But yeah, he possibly, I'm not saying that there could be, there's no conspiracy here or there, okay? But I'll leave you to all of that, because that's actually not uh, my forte, right? And I think that would be me. The last time I was supposed to take calls, but I couldn't because of other things going on. So I will take calls tonight to complete the rest of the evening. And if you're up for it, okay, uh, you uh, should like the broadcast first, okay? Show that you are here, like the broadcast, share it, and then uh, get your phone. The number you can call is right there on your screen. And when I get back, I will take calls. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, for those who are still here with us, uh, remember you need uh, to at least like the broadcast to show that you are here. I mean, I keep reminding you. I also have a, a call on the line. I hope uh, you are still there. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm live, 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 live. Yes, my you are. Ah, my you are. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> glad, glad, glad to speak with you once again. Um, Thanks so much. Um, you're, you're doing a great job, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, people uh, are complaining about the whole thing in Nigeria, uh, protests there and there. Uh, but I think it's, um, I don't know what's going on. I, I noticed there is more protests in the northern area, uh, northern region of the country than than the, south. the southern region of the country. I, yeah, and it's... Um, it's uh, strange because um, mm -hmm. I think the south, southern uh, region are always more uh, alert when it comes to um, bad governance than even the NSAS, uh, the northern region wasn't uh, part of it. 
Um, but this time around, uh, I think there's something. Something is cooking. I think uh, by the time the South also wake up and they, so it's going to be South and the North coming coming out to to fight the government. I think it's going to be very heavy on the. That's it's going to be effective. Jubilee, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. The the uh, Shege speaks just one language. Yes. And everybody understands exactly. It. So it doesn't matter exactly. where you come just from like... now. Uh, hey, it will touch you. Yeah, once it yeah. touches you, we are going to react yeah. differently anyway. But well, you are right. Uh, yes, so yes. Hmm. Just like everybody is celebrating, everybody will have been celebrating our victory, but, uh, you know, the the only happiness Nigerians will have uh, had, you know, was caught, <laughs> caught short. That was also taken away the from final. them. I know. Yeah. And it was so, just like, um, so, the apple go hmm. Yeah. And the NLC, NLC that you talked about, the NLC that they are going on, they are going on strike after two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and people are saying that a month. <laughs> that's not realistic. Um, they are just saying that just to. Um, but, but, I mean, I even ask, uh, yeah, this... you, you, right? What do you think? <laughs> we know what is not realistic, right? We all know, right? Okay. But they are paying them thirty thousand yeah. now. They are promising them extra five thousand to make it thirty-five. Now, in this economy of Nigeria, yes. right, like you, oh my God. what do you think is going ah. to be like, uh, you know, averagely, if anybody wants to propose minimum wage, if you have to say, propose, ah. looking at everything. Because, ah, okay, looking at everything as it is now, uh, they, they claim they are getting more money because of the subsidy now. So I think <clears throat> even the governor, so most of the governors are not even paying the 30000 So mm -hmm. that's the problem. So I don't. So I don't think even the, the probably well, River State might pay my pay fifty thousand. one. Yeah. So you get now. Like yeah, just okay, say, maybe. okay. You know what? Then we will talk about if mm. they pay or not pay. Okay. You tell me. What okay. Do you think okay. Is adequate, sir? Okay. Maybe. Uh, uh, maybe they might. They might. They might struggle to pay fifty thousand. Let Let's put it that way. No, no. You are fifty thousand. Them. If I uh, if I have to propose that, uh, how much do you think they can even start with a salary in Nigeria that you can begin to say? Okay. Oh, if they pay um, this, so, if they pay okay. this so, it's, it's a good start too. So I'll say maybe five hundred thousand mm. naira. That's also unrealistic. Yes, I would say it's <laughs> all it's all realistic. It's all realistic because uh, so, let, yeah. let me just say, hmm. let me say three hundred. I don't think they three hundred thousand. Even they cannot even pay three hundred thousand. Yeah, ask me and you. See me. Ask even me even you, hundred thousand is a problem. Uh, oh my all god. Those even hundred thousand billion too, Baba. If they have to give oh, enough, Jesus Christ. Hi, maybe fifty thousand. Yes. Last last fifty thousand. Ah, Nigeria. I don't know. I don't know how. Someone was telling me that two pure water, just two pieces yeah. of pure water, is now fifteen naira. And I could remember before I left Nigeria, mm. they used to sell those pure a bag of pure water, sixty naira, sixty really? naira. Then I think back, uh, probably during the Jonathan's regime, around the same time, we used to Jonathan. sell it for fourteen naira. <laughs> then it became fifty. Then it yes. became sixty. That was when 50, people were yeah, for a long time. It's 20 in the bag. 20. Now, two pieces. 20. Two, two pieces now. I don't know. What, <laughs> there must be something these politicians are doing to our people that they cannot see that things are going a wire. I mean, there must be a voodoo. There must be a voodoo somewhere. Something. I don't understand. There must be something because, I, okay, well, so this guy, Dark Man, said that social media is a distraction anyway, that if they take away social media, then Nigeria will rise up, that most youth are into social media. All right, no problem. Um, Thank you. I, I'm going to call, call now. Thank you That's for talking, uh, talking to you once again. Thank you so much again, for yeah? calling in, okay? We will see yeah. how they do all the abracadabra. We will be here. <laughs> we will be here. We will be here. We will see. We will see. <laughs> Thank you, Baba. And that's true. We will be here. Mm -hmm. We will tell you what this is going to end like. And if you don't believe, then we will be here when that uh, begins to happen. And then we'll ask you, now what are you going to do? Instead of you coming to come and be like, you know, somebody who gets sense and say, oh, talk, 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 talk. Let us act. What are you going to do? Hello there. Hello, top of the evening, Mr. Maegun, the general. This is Windy City. The Windy City from Chicago. Two days in a row. I'm so lucky. I know. I mean, I sometimes, this you see, sometimes people pick your voice and I just had to quickly with you. I would say, Windy, I said, no, it's not him. It's good to have you back, sir. It's oh, me. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I'm fine. Um, Regarding the uh, the last caller, 
uh, pointed to the riot in the northern part of Nigeria. I think it comes that it all boils down to what you used to say. Different, somebody like their op- oppressor differently, mm-hmm. right? You used to say that. Don't act differently. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I think when Buari was there, mm. all the hula balu was coming from the southern part. The south. And the and the northern they sitting on the pot body the they sitting by the body by the soup by the pot of soup they were they just eating exactly they were they were yeah. the <laughs> they don't they, hmm. yeah they don't care name all the minister from AG attorney attorney J as you call him <laughs> all the way down yeah. to the lowest of the lowest hmm. it's all full of knee full of knee full of knee whatever full of knee does it it's, it's just hmm. hey, it's okay. So now there is now the tons of the the the, the 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 thieves, the thieves in the in the south the, the Yoruba I want to come mm. I want I want really let's get so now you know Yoruba Pro- we have a mm. yeah 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 so now that the 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 paradigm has shifted now. Mm-hmm. The northern part, the now realize that ah, you know, things are not easy. Mm. So it's better we so I think this is my own conspiracy theory and I own it hundred percent. I think all what, yeah, I oh. think what they are trying to do is probably signal to the people in the military like, you know what, kick these guys out, man, and put some mm-hmm. full in guy in there. But you you are not seeing it as the fact that uh, you know uh, the hardship, as it is correctly nah. right. So their own uh, protest, you don't see it as really really genuine because the hardship didn't start now. So why now? So you don't see it as genuine. Yeah, right? yeah. The reason why they are do what they are doing right now is because they don't have the power okay. and they are suffering. Mm. You see, it is it, 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 not going to be funny when the rabbit get the gun. Mm. When the hunter got get has gone and chasing the rabbit, it's all fine. When Buari was there and every you know they kidnapping young Kidding old doing everything, it's fine. Now that the, you know, like I said, the paradigm has shifted. Now the rabbit got the gun, <laughs> and the hunter now has the to hunter, run. The hunter is now the hunter. <laughs> Yeah, so now they're feeling the impact. We are not, you know, we are not in, we, are, we don't have power, we don't have any minister to talk about. You know, we have this Igbo guy coming from Wiki, just doing whatever I like. They don't like that. Hmm. So it might be, yeah, I, I mean, just like my own conspiracy, it's, it, they are not doing it in the interest of everybody in Nigeria. They are not. They are not. They are doing it just to probably catch. We so, we, so we your probably theory is, arise it. Your theory is that uh, those protests are not just protests. There are people who are currently out of power that are finding it difficult to function. Yeah. So they are those fingers behind yes. us. You kind of feel like that. Yes. Like okay, okay. I mean, this is where that is where I'm coming from. Let's as assume like tomorrow we wake up. And one Fulani guy over to, uh, uh, yeah. Do you think they are good? They are not going to be riot in the, they will be, they'll be celebrating. Hmm. Hmm. I can tell you that. I mean, I will believe that too. Because once the they will be celebrating, says, except if the person is Igbo, they will start rioting. You know that. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, 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 Jesus. You, I will start. I mean, oh, fact, no. The two facts can coexist, <laughs> sir. Windy City, you know that, right? We know that yeah, uh, yes, if somebody yes. says tomorrow and say, fellow Nigerians can get the start jubilation <laughs> in the north, I bet that I agree. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And at the same they time, bring their the bag, says, bugudu, 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 bugudu. you know, if the person that say uh, the person that takes over says, fellow Nigerians, I am General Chukwe Meka Chine. Ah, 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 ah. Riot in my ah. opinion, and winning city, you know that, right? The first thing they'll be the first thing they'll be looking for what's the name of the uh, presidential aspirant, that guy. Obi. Um 
Yeah, they be oh, yeah, he was in charge, he was the one that orchestrated that thing without knowing the fact, without knowing everything. And guess what? If it's a if it's a uh let's forget about Igbo. Mm. Apologies to all my Igbo, Igbo friends and every because they are not gonna let Igbo over overthrow me, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna be the I mean, Fulani. You remember military never to be deceived into leading any coup. Yeah. Because you are going to give them eh, the license to start uh, killing all the vulnerable Igbos they can come across, including those who are even not like yes. Igbos, but from the eastern part yes. of, you know what I mean? Like, they will go after them. So no Igbo military man should selfishly say he wants to save Nigeria. He's joining a coup. Uh, that's just an advice. But when you see it? If it's, uh, if it's some general, don't go Yaru of a casino or somewhere. Yeah. The northern people will be jubilating why the you will see the, the riots in the south. You I can guarantee you Lagos will be that's when the Lagos will realize they are part of Yoruba. Windy City, Windy City. Eh? Yeah. Yes, sir. Think, Bo, Toro. Now, where will they play? Will they hear the fact? Eh? I have said this and I'll keep yes. saying it. If I wake up tomorrow morning, sir, eh, and there is one Dongo Yaru that has uh, overthrown government in Nigeria, I will be one of the arrowheads that will mobilize money all over the world right for the uh, total <laughs> to, uh, to the total breakdown of uh, uh what do you call it uh, any kind of uh, no, I'm not that. any sir i will travel the world to ask people that if any don't go here from any we announce any goddamn thing or make it break up nigeria quick in here sir honestly so so and regarding the labor forget about that i, I, I saw you and god the other guy haggling around his 500 000. they're not going to pay them shishi like your life i may borrow your language mm -hmm. you know you know they know what to do they know the the guy the the idiot guy that was talking on talking head on the on the tv that was um negotiating why would you give the how many times I remember on your last one of your broadcasts, so. you actually went back like he gave them three weeks. He, that that lapses. Mm. He, he gave them another three weeks. Where why would you? All you need to do is wake up, my brethren. We need to hit the streets. That's it. Shut that's when I know they are serious. It. They go. They look for you. They don't go see you. They go. They ask somebody to yep. stop the whole thing. They don't go see you. But not live, Baba. See, when yep. the city. Yeah. So it's such a pleasure talking yes, to sir. you again, eh? Take thank you very much keep you, on man. doing what you're doing man god bless you, and you bye too. bye you have a good one sir thank you so much that's uh my man windy city you know where is windy city that is chicago i had to go and google it like ah windy city as i order oh, chicago that's your name by the way yeah Watch. hello there hello my good evening sir good evening to you sir how are you i'm okay and you very well. Thanks for asking. Please. This is Ferdinand calling from Newcastle. Ferdinand. Wow. Yeah. How are you today? I'm good, sir. I'm good. Grand prof, um, I've, I've, I've been working. With, I've been. I've been working um for some time. So yes. I'm actually off. That's why I decided to call. Um. So you chose I, to spend I, your I day off with me as well. Part of it, right? Thank you. It, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, you see, I. I'm actually calling um because of what the first speaker said, and then I'm trying to like um I'm trying to kind of like compare it to what the second speaker is saying now. Hmm. And if you remember during my last call, I told you that it's it's unheard of Northerners protesting. They've not really been the protesting type, especially when the South Southerners are protesting. Hmm. Because whenever we the Southerners protest, they not see it as a threat to their government, especially when they have their own person in power. That's right. But now, now a Satana is president, and uh, the Northerners have been, have been the ones protesting. All of a sudden, it looks as if the hardship is um, like it's new. More it's just happening now. Like it's something that yeah, just started yeah. last uh, uh, June. I get you. But, yeah, hmm. yeah. So there, there are two things that I'm actually looking at because. Mm -hmm. Um, let me first say what the, let me actually um uh, throw a little light into what the first caller said. If the Southerners to join this protest, Nigeria will come down. Like mm. the um administration of um Kulu mm. might not last long. 
the way I'm seeing it. Because if the Southerners should throw in their weight behind this protest that is going on in the Northern it States, be like, uh, the it, it will be like, hmm. yeah, Spark. you know, there will be there will be an explosion. You know, because right now it looks as if the Satanas are quiet because it is their son, but that is not the, the truth. No. Now, if the Satanas should throw their weight, I mean both southeast and southwest behind this um high cost of living, it will actually give the north the more boost. energy. Mm. Yes, mm. the boost they need. And if that happens, how many people will they arrest? How many people will DSS clamp down? Remember the last time. The Northern States anti-protest during NSAS. I remember. So the DSS, they, they sent military to the Southern who started shooting. Now, how many military would they deploy? Do they have enough military in the Nigerian army to deploy both to the South and to the North to curb this protest? And from there, it might spark up a revolution. Uh, just give me a sec, uh, Fedi, right? Uh, I've got yeah. uh, a short uh, screen for a sec, okay? Uh, just stay on the line with, uh, okay. with me, okay? Don't go anywhere. Just a moment, right? Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Ferdinand. Okay. I just had uh, yeah. a little bit of a disruption. So I need to quickly put that back and we can uh, continue. Uh, apologies to everyone okay. as well. I don't know. I just, my system just uh, overheated. Uh, so sorry about that, Ferdy. Please continue. It's, please. A, it, it's okay. So now, now, what I'm thinking now is if the Southerners should join, mm. it will kind of like boost the Northerners, you know? And the Kulu's administration might not really last long because he came in with a very bad policy and decision. Mm. From his inauguration speech, fuel, uh, there was a fuel increase in fuel mm. price. From the first day he was inaugurated, I was watching you that day. Mm. You know, you were sharing everything. From his inaugural speech, fuel price was increased, even when, even though they tried denying it. They had now, no plan, though, it, they remove it still. No, no, no plan, yes. Now, comparing it with what the previous caller just said, I mean, the, the last caller who just left now, mm -hmm. um, it might also be a signal from the north that military should take over because right now, um, Kolu has actually been making some statements up, trying to like appeal to Nigerians and the military that they should be tolerant a little and give time that things will be normal. But the truth is that he came in with some difficult policies mm. that hit Nigerians. You know, since I've been, since I came back from Nigeria, I mean, people have been calling me, asking for money. And the truth is that how many people are you going to help? Nigeria is so... Friends and family are so hungry that even if you travel to Nigeria with 100 million, it won't go anywhere. One million naira is like 300,000 naira of 2001. Mm -hmm. You get it? So, mm -hmm. yeah, one million naira is like, you know, 300,000 naira, you know, three, four years ago. So, uh, the, the new Nigeria now we are seeing now is something we've not really seen before. You know, mm -hmm. the protest, you know, uh, this hardship has really hit Nigerians that they took to the streets and started protesting, especially the Northerners where mm -hmm. they can, that can easily be brainwashed. So um, this kind of thing has never really happened in the history of Nigeria before. But I'm but very, very it's optimistic like, it's that one like of these days... Brewing, right? It's like everything is still brewing and they are doing everything as well to suppress yeah. it and suppress it. So the battle is it, between exactly. how those numbers and those people are going to connect and become a real one exactly Proud, you know I mean? and if yeah and if the south should actually join the north my take now if yeah, the south like should actually case. join the north mm. in this protest these bad politicians can no longer divide nigerian youth along the line of ethnicity religion and tribalism mm. you know because this would be like what we now unify the youth both north and south will now be hung do you actually believe that is is the way things are going? Like I'm you just, can project that so, and say, well, the way things are going, right? Yes. The moment yes, things yes, get to because, stage that, hmm, I get that now. Yes, because because Anafa, you you played a video of Anafa who was complaining of the high cost of living. That's right. The thing is hitting everybody, up, left, right, and center. You know, whether you're Muslim, Yoruba, 
Igbo, Aosa, Fulani, you don't, you, you, you don't buy anything cheaper than any tribe or any religion. So okay. it's just like what Peter B said during his coming. So mm. the high cost of uh, living is hitting everybody, irrespective of ethnicity, religion, and the uh, uh, party line or whatever, politics, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think I think right now, hunger is going to, uh, you know, kind of like unite the whole country, both north and south, especially the youth. Mm-hmm. Hunger, unemployment, and insecurity will unite everybody. And for once, this revolution we've been hoping for might actually happen. And that. then Nigeria will be Nigeria will split into four different countries. So <laughs> this thing happening right now is mm-hmm. is something really new that nobody can really tell. But right. I'm, I'm still analyzing and looking at it. But Kolu might not finish his administration. Just you know, mark this. He might not finish his anyway, administration. We'll see. We'll see how that early. pans out. Okay. Was, yeah. You know exactly, what I believe exactly. is that uh, you know what they say about if you find yourself in a hole, you should stop digging. Mm. You know that. Now, what we have yeah. seen in these criminals and their and their enterprise is the fact that Nigerians have been dragged into a deeper hole, and these guys are very, not very even giving point. up. They are digging more. They are not even filling yeah. the hole back. All their yeah. actions are not showing that there is going to be at any all. reprieve for people. At all. So, so, at yeah, all. At all. If if he could if 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 he, if he could actually come in within few months in power, he. He made a look. He allocated some funds to buy new SUVs for lawmakers. Yeah. Can you believe that nonsense? You and I were in the UK. How many SUVs do? MPs I mean, wasn't and able to buy the uh, 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 in Scotland. Cars, so. See, in Scotland, they, they are Scottish MP and all yeah. this. What? Do, how many cars do they use? They don't buy them you know? any cars. Yeah, we don't buy cars for anybody right. here anyway. So you buy a car you yourself, all right? You well, you however, I'm saying. You uh, uh, oh, there's something I wanted to say. I just uh, that you said just, they did not buy them. Uh, they didn't buy the cars. What did you they have cars in Nigeria. Yeah. Those billions of yeah. era that they used to, they wanted to buy, I mean, they bought cars with, right? They send them to Japan yeah. to buy Japanese cars, send them to of, Germany of to course, buy German of cars course. and all over the of place. Of course, they would rather they would rather patronize Germany than patronize innocent because no, it's evil. Hmm. They won't patronize innocent they because patronize it's evil. Uh, yeah, and even if there are other local car manufacturers or dealers, they, they won't patronize they them that. because they will see it like it's, it's a way of Kind of like um um supporting them or kind of like financing.